the news on PBCJ. I am Simone Absalom. The first supplementary estimates for the 2018-2019 fiscal year was approved in the House of Representatives on Tuesday. This means that the government will be spending an additional $17.42 billion for this financial year. The estimates show that the budget has been increased from $773.68 billion to $791.11 billion. Over the fiscal year to date, a number of critical expenditure pressures have emerged that have necessitated a revision to the 2018-19 budget, resulted in the net additional expenditure of $17.4 billion. So, Mr. Speaker, the first supplementary estimates provide for a revision in expenditure from $773.7 billion to $791 billion, comprised of non-debt expenditure of $466 billion debt service of $289 billion and a below-the-line provision of $35 billion to address the uh, losses in the Bank of Jamaica, repurchasing Petrodam shares and the loan to Port Authority in respect of its business process outsourcing facilities. Non-debt expenditure is estimated to increase by $16.6 billion with recurrent programs accounting for $11.2 billion and capital programs $5.3 billion. Of the increase, $7.3 billion will go towards the major infrastructure development program. Another $7.1 billion has been set aside for a grant to local authorities to deal with payment of arrears and current charges for street lighting. In his remarks, Minister of Finance and Public Service Dr. Nigel Clark spoke to the late payment to the Jamaica Public Service, JPS, for street lighting. Mr. Speaker, late payment to the JPS for street lighting has long characterized public finances for a long time. Substantial and increasing arrears to, due to JPS by local government has translated into the arrears owing by JPS to Petrodam to also increase. And this balancing act has been around for a long time. Government owes JPS, JPS owes Petrodam, and Mr. Speaker, it is an inefficient way of financing. The government has decided to address this decisively for the following principal reasons. The first reason, Mr. Speaker, is that the non-payment to Petrojam by JPS is impacting Petrojam's ability to pay its obligations, principle of which are its tax obligations and other expenses as well, forcing Petrojam to seek additional financing to facilitate its operations. In the revised budget, some $445 million will go towards enhanced security measures to support the states of public emergency and zones of special operations to support the establishment of the Public Safety and Traffic Enforcement Branch and to improve 60 priority police locations island-wide. Education Minister Senator Ruel Reed yesterday made an about turn and announced that the performance task of the examination has been rescheduled for March 2019. At a press conference attended by stakeholders and ministry officials, the minister said the decision was made after much consultation. Based on the consultation the JT have had with their teachers and arising from just looking at where they are and their comfort level in terms of the new items and so on, they have asked us to make some adjustment to the examination schedule, which we have agreed to, and there's a MOU that we will sign with them to this effect. So as of now, I'm, I'm officially advising the country that we are now changing the schedule so that the, the first, the first um, item of the three part item will be now done in February. So we retain the schedule for the ability test in February 2019. What will change is the performance task. So the performance task will move from December 2018 to March 2019. And the curriculum based tests will remain on schedule for April 2019. 
that will allow us to grade and be able to provide the scores and the placement of our students on schedule for June 2019. In August, JTA President Dr. Garth Anderson had argued that the school placement examination, PEP, was on course for failure. In an interview with the Jamaica Observer, Dr. Anderson said that the association was pleased with this concession as it relates to the exam. He is quoted as saying, we are happy. We were part of the discussions and our teachers had asked us several times to ask for a pushback of the exam so that they can get some time to better prepare the students, he said. The ability test is on track for February and as the curriculum-based test for April. A new website to assist teachers, parents and students in preparation for the primary exit profile will be launched by the end of the week, so says Minister of Education, Youth and Information, Senator Ruel Reed. He was speaking at a teacher sensitization and consultation session for PEP at the Old Harbour New Testament Church in St. Catherine. He noted that printed material will also be circulated. PEP will replace GSAT as the National Secondary School Entrance Examination. It is intended to provide a better and more complete profile of students' academic and critical thinking capabilities at the end of primary level education. It comprises a performance task, ability task, and curriculum-based task. Sophia Dare. An assistant to former Energy, Science and Technology Minister Dr. Andrew Wheatley and a director on the board of the National Energy Solutions Limited was a signatory for checks to contractors for work done on behalf of the agency. That information came to light during yesterday's sitting of Parliament's Public Administration and Appropriations Committee, the PAAC. Carolyn Warren, the former managing director of Nestle, finally got her chance to respond to questions from the PAAC. She told the committee that Anthony Brown, Nestle's chief engineer, who was sent on leave, was never to return as a signing officer. Nestle's management came into question during the fallout from the recent Petroderm scandal. The resolution from the board at the time was to remove Mr. Um Brown, Mr. Anthony Brown, Miss, to remove the personnel officer and the cost accountant. Mr. Brown was not the only person who was removed. When um, Mr. Brown was going on leave, I pointed out as the managing director that would have a problem with the signing of the checks, and the board decided to add Mr. Pommels as he was the one who was going to relieve. She told the PAAC that she replaced Brown as a signing officer for Nestle, but it was the board's chairman, Oswald Williams, who explained the full list of signing officers. It was also revealed that Warren recommended that the agency engage the services of Lenny Gordon, the head of Peak Energy Solutions, for work on a multi-million dollar project. Peak Energy Solutions was paid more than $12 million for work despite the absence of a contract. Warren explained that the company was recommended after the initial contractor expressed a difficulty completing it. When um, the project needed to be done, and we contacted Mr. Christie, he, as I said before, was not able to see the project through to the end because he said he had work doing. So we needed to find somebody who could work along with him who he could bring up to speed. I recommended Mr. Gordon because I knew the quality of his work. And as I and this is a provision of solar systems. Solar systems. Uh -huh. To begin with, at this time, we are not sure we're getting the work, you know. At this time, at the beginning, we are not sure that we are going to be engaged. She said she had never seen a tender process for any of its outsourced work because the payments all fell below the $2 million threshold for tendering. Peak has been reportedly paid $12.5 million for work done. Motorists should see an increase at the pumps in the price of gasoline and diesel today. According to the latest ex-refinery costs from Petroderm, 87 and 90 octane gasoline will be sold for $142.02 and $144.86 per litre, respectively, up by $1.98 each. 
Automotive diesel fuel will be sold for $144.92 per litre, following an increase of $3.15, while ultra-low sulfur diesel is up by $2.83 and will be sold for $148.82 per litre. Kerosene increased in price by $2.52 and will be sold for $125.32 per litre. Propane liquid petroleum will be sold for $58.08 per litre, down by $0.08. Cents. And of course, the retailers will add their markups. In regional news, we look to Trinidad and Tobago, where the battle between unions and the government over the closure of state-owned oil company Petrotrin is heading to court. It's still on. It will continue tomorrow morning. So I'll be a little bit limited in what I can say until the matter is fully adjudicated. Yeah. It is the um, injunctive relief is to stop the company from terminating all the workers uh, pending the full adjudication of the industrial relations offense. But I do want to use this opportunity, having said that, having given you the facts of, in terms of what happened, um, I do want to point out that, that, that what was interesting is that we saw an attempt by the Attorney General to intervene in these proceedings. And eventually, of course, he, uh, the attorney representing the Attorney General had to withdraw that oral application for the Attorney General to intervene. In sports, a 2-1 scoreline in the scrimmage game against Rio Grande Valley FC Toro's youth team may have gone against them, but the main objective for the senior reggae girls team was met. The game, played late Tuesday evening, was used to gauge the team's shape in a 5-3-2 formation as they continue their build-up to the CONCACAF Women's Championships, a qualifier for the 2019 FIFA Women's World Cup to be staged in France. Coach Hugh Menzies pointed out that the scrimmage provided some impetus to the team's preparation and aided nicely in the fine-tuning of some tactical areas ahead of kickoff. The Becca girls face Canada this week. They will then do battle against Costa Rica next Monday before closing the group phase against Caribbean neighbors Cuba next Thursday. And that's it for the news. Thanks so much for making it PBCJ. Remember, we are the People's Station.